Welcome to Godot Recipes. In this video, we're going to look at how to make a mini-map or a radar item for your UI, displaying the interesting objects in your game. As always, you can see a written version of this on the Godot Recipes website at the link in the description. We've got a lot to do, so let's get started. Here's a preview of what we're going for. Objects appear in the mini-map based on their positions in the world. By the way, another approach to this is to alert the player to nearby threats by drawing indicators on the edges of the screen. Game Endeavor has done a video on exactly how to do that, which I recommend you watch. And if you're not subscribed to his channel, you're really missing out. So to begin, I've made a simplistic 2D top-down game setup with a player and some mobs that run around and some crates you can pick up. Basically, it looks like this. You can walk around. You can pick up the crates. These are going to be some positive object you can look for, and then there are mobs that wander around the map randomly. There's no shooting, there's no damage, there's none of that stuff, because I just wanted the basics here. And if you don't know how to set up things like this, uh, I have some other tutorials on how to make a tile map to do your level, how to do a top-down character, and I'll link to those in the description below. But this is the game that we want to add the mini-map to so that I can see where these objects are even when they're off screen. All right, we're going to start by setting up the layout of our mini-map. So I'm going to open a new scene here. And we want our mini-map to play nice with whatever other UI elements you might have in your game. You know, full game, you're probably going to have a, a health display or some kind of inventory or or some other UI elements that are also on the screen at the same time. And so we're going to set up our minimap using containers so that we can place that into any other responsive UI that you've created for the rest of your game. So let's start by creating a margin container. So I don't want the whatever size we have our minimap at, I want to make sure all the elements of it stay inside with a little bit of buffer space around it. So I'm going to set the custom constants of this to 5 on each side, just to give us a little bit of space around it. Oops, and let's, let's rename this to minimap, and then we're going to save it. All right, now we want to add our frame in here for our minimap. And to do that, we're going to use not a texture rect, but a nine patch rect. And I'll show you what that does in a second here. So you see this texture region panel opened up. Well, if we drag our texture in here, here's why we want to use a nine patch rect. Because if we used a regular texture and we resize the frame, then our 128 by 128 image becomes stretched and ugly. And I don't want that. I want the frame to stay the same size and just enclose a different size space as we move it around. Now in the nine patch rect you can go into the texture region box and you can draw out the region you want and you know set the margins and you see how they're changing. But I sometimes find it easier to just enter the numbers. In this case we want to put in 64 for all four margins. And now what we will have is when we resize you see the frame borders stay the same size and they just stretch to enclose whatever area is inside. Okay, so now we want to fill this inside part with our grid texture that's going to tile to cover everything. But I don't want, if I make it a child of the nine patch rect, it's going to tile the full area, right? And I want it to stay inside of the borders of the frame. So as a another child of the minimap, so it's going to be a sibling of the nine patch rect. We're going to add another margin container. And why don't we go ahead and name the nine patch rect frame so we know what that's for. So this margin container is going to hold our grid and we just need to give it the margins that will ensure that it stays inside the frame. And that is 20 pixels on all four sides. And then as a child of that, we will put the a texture rect, which I'm going to name grid and drop the pattern blueprint pattern in there. 
and set the stretch mode to tile. And now we have a nice filled image that will tile to cover however big or small we make our map. But also, you can see if I zoom in here, the borders of the grid are inside the frame. So I'm going to leave the minimap mini size to around 200 by 200, just as a starting size for us. Again, it can, it'll be flexible once we're finished. So this is our node setup and has everything that we need in it for the appearance of our map. Now we can start writing the script that will make everything appear. So let's add a script to this. And the first thing that we want to display in the minimap is a marker for the player at the center. So as a child of the grid, I'm going to add a sprite node. And in this sprite node, I'm going to stick the texture for the player icon, this, this little arrow. Now notice how it put it right in the top left corner of the grid, right? Which is because it's a child of the grid and the zero zero point of the grid is right there. Now the grid's size is 150 by 150 right now. That means our sprite node would be at the center if we put it at 75, 75. And don't worry, we'll do this automatically in the script, but for right now, this is the way to show you manually how we want to put the marker at the center of the grid. Now I'm going to add two more markers, so I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call this first one the player marker, and then the second one, I'm going to use this little red icon, and this is going to be the mob marker. You can put that over there. And then this last one is going to be the alert marker. And this is this marks something that you want to pay attention to. So we'll use the little yellow exclamation point. So there's our three markers that we're going to have in the map. But I'm going to go ahead and hide the mob and alert marker because we don't want them showing by default. Now at this point, we have a decision to make. And that decision kind of depends on how your game is set up overall. And since we're using a simplistic, you know, simplified game as a demonstration, the way that we do it in this example might not be the best for your particular game setup. So keep that in mind if you're following along and adding this into your own game. But what I'm going to do is I have right now two objects that need to appear on the map. I have the mob and I have the crate. And I'm just going to put both of them in a group called Minimap Objects. And so any object that's in this group will appear on the minimap. And then the other thing I'm going to do is in the object itself, I'm just going to make a property called Minimap Icon that tells me what icon to use or which marker to use to show this object in the map. So now we can go over to our minimap here and we look at our script. And we're going to start by adding a couple of variables here. I'm going to add a node path to the player. Since the player is going to appear at the center of the map, but also the positions of all the other objects are going to be relative to this player, right? since the player stays at the center. So we want a link to the player. We're also going to have a variable called zoom. It's going to be how much the map is zoomed in and out. I'm going to set this to 1.5 right now, and then we'll talk about uh, at the end how we can vary that to change the effect. And then I'm going to add some references to the various nodes that we're going to need to use in our script. Uh, this is for convenience. And then we need a way to map those tags that we gave the objects, the properties that we assign to them, to the actual objects that we want to attach to. So I told the mob that its icon should be mob. That's going to link to this mob marker. And then the same thing for the alert one links to the alert marker. Oops, 
And then that needs to be on ready again because these are on ready variables. And then the last things we need is we need the grid scale. This is the scale factor to go from the size of the world down to the size of the map. And then we're going to also keep a list of markers. So let's say there are 10 mobs on the map. Each mob is going to have one marker item assigned to it, you know, moving around on the in the map grid. And so this markers dictionary is going to have the keys are going to be the actual objects, the actual mobs and crates, and the values will be the markers that are assigned to them. Then in the ready, we're going to center the player marker. We want to make sure it's at the center of the grid. So we're going to set its position equal to the grid's rect size divided by 2. And then we're also going to calculate that grid scale. And what that's going to be is we're going to take the grid rect size, how big our grid is, and we're going to divide by the viewport rect, which is the size of the screen, dot size, and then we're going to multiply by the zoom. So what this means right now is that the grid size will represent 1.5 times the viewport size. And then let's see how this is going. We'll go down here and we'll do our process function and we'll set the uh, players. Now if there's no player, meaning I haven't assigned anything to this node path, then then I want to return. I don't want to I want to skip the process function if there's no player to track. But if there is, then we're going to take the player marker and we're going to set its rotation equal to the player's rotation. So we'll do a get node player dot rotation. But the one thing to keep in mind is our player marker points upwards. So that means it's not pointing down the x-axis, which is the zero rotation. So we need to add pi over 2. So let's try this out. We'll go over to our world scene. We have a canvas layer already to hold our UI. And we're going to add an instance of the minimap. And we can place it, why don't we place it in the bottom... I'm going to put it in the bottom right. And let's hit play. Okay, so that's where it is. Now, notice it's not doing anything because we didn't assign the player. So let's go over here to our inspector and assign the player object. And now we should have, there we go, we should have a arrow that points in the same direction the player is pointing. Now let's make markers for each of the items on the map. So we'll do this in the ready. Map objects equals get tree, get nodes in group, mini map objects. So now we have an array of all of the mobs and crates. And then we're going to go through each of them and we make a new marker for each one. And we're going to use the icons dictionary to get the items minimap uh, icon. Right, so now I've chosen whichever marker matches and I'm going to duplicate it. So now I have a duplicate of the mob marker or of the alert marker depending. Then we're going to add it as a child of the grid. And then we're going to add it. We're going to make, oh, we got to make sure we show it right, because the, the ones we're duplicating are hidden. And we need to set our dictionary so that we have a link between the mob and the mob's marker, or the crate and the crate's marker.
And then in the process, we can just use that to set all of their positions. So for item in markers, then we need to figure out the object's position. So the object's position is the item's position minus the player's. That's the vector from the player to the item. And then we need to multiply that by the grid scale so that we scale it down to the grid size. And then we need to add grid rec size over 2 because we need to shift it to the center of the grid. And then we can place the object there. So we take the marker and we set its position to that new position we calculated. Now if we run this, here's what we're going to see. There's the mob, you see it moving, but let me run over here on the side and you see how the mo the minimap icons are being drawn way outside the map, right? It's the the mob is this far away from the player at the map scale, so it's being drawn that far away. And so the positions are updating, but we need to constrain them. We need to keep them inside the map. So right here, before we set the position, we're going to constrain it. So we're going to say object pause.x, and we're going to clamp that to between 0 and the grid rect size, rect size dot x, and then do the same thing for y. And that way that no matter where the icon is calculated to be, it'll stay inside the grid. So now you can see all the ones that are off and far away are being drawn along the edges here. Now, at this point we can decide kind of what we want to do about these icons that are off the edge. All right? We basically have two choices. We could hide them so that you can't see these ones that are really far away at all, or we could change their appearance in some way if they're on the edge. So I'm going to do the second one. So before we clamp the position, we're going to check and see if grid oops, uh, get rect. So we want to get the rectangle of the grid and just check if it has the point we're looking for, which is the object position plus grid rect position. The reason we have to do that grid rect position is there's a little bit of an offset, right? The grid, because it's inside a margin container, has a position of 20, 20. All right. So if that point that the marker is being drawn at is inside the rectangle, then we'll set the marker scale to 1, 1. But if it's outside, then we want to set the scale to a smaller value. And so I'm going to use 0.75. And then this will update as they come in and out of that area. All right, so now we've got small ones around the edge. And see how that one turned small when I went off the screen. And as I go down here, you see they turn big when they get closer. Now the last thing I wanted to add was to allow us to be able to change this zoom. So I'm going to take this zoom and I'm going to add a set get to it. So we'll have a function that gets called whenever it is changed. So we'll define that here. And we want to clamp this value so it doesn't get too big or too small because we're going to change it with the mouse wheel. So we can clamp the value between 0 0.5 and 5. And these are just arbitrary values that I've chosen to look pretty good. You can adjust them how you like, and then we're going to use that to set the grid scale, which is the calculation we did here. All right, we want to change the value of that. And then to make that take effect, we need to connect the uh, minimaps GUI input.
All right, so if this is called, then we got an event. So if the event is an input mouse, mouse button and it's pressed, then we have two options. Either it was a wheel up or wheel down. And we check that with the button index. Wheel up. And then the other option is that it might be wheel down. And then in both cases, we're just going to change the zoom by 0 0.1. If we'll add it, if we scrolled up on the wheel, and we'll subtract it if we scroll down on the wheel. And now if we run this again, you should be able to see the difference. I'll go over here where there's a bunch of items and then you see if I'm inside I'm scrolling the wheel in and out you can see how it changes the effect to show them as being closer to me even though these guys are pretty far away now so I'm zoomed out quite a bit there he is okay so that's the mini map now one thing that we didn't talk about was what to do when an item disappears so if one of these mobs is killed or if the crate is picked up we want these markers to disappear and conversely, if you have a mob spawner or something like that, you want them to appear when those things show up. Like right now, if I go pick up this crate, I'm going to crash the game because it's not going to know what to do with that marker anymore. It no longer has a, an item that it's attached to. Uh, but that's okay. We're not going to deal with that in this tutorial. That's something where you'd want to tie that into your spawning system maybe uh, have some signals that get sent out when a mob spawns or despawns, connect that signal to the minimap and remove the marker when that happens. Uh, you might want to have more marker types. You just create more of these markers uh, and link them to the units that you want to use them. You could have uh, you could have a picture of your map as the background instead of the grid here and scroll that around as you walk around your map so you see the walls as well. A lot of different options. So hopefully this helps you and you can uh, adapt this to work with whatever project you're working on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. This tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.